I was debating if I should post this story, but after a few weeks of nothing happening, I decided to say fuck it and post it. So first, some context. I work as a ranger in the Barganzinski State Natural Reservoir, near the lake by call. Over the past years, I've come to find out that Lake by call is a very fucked place. So here's a few of my experiences. I'll start off with a few oddities. Aside from the usual ice rings, Baikal Zen, vehicles, animals, people stuck in ice, there are oddities like unknown ships appearing on foggy days. I remember spotting a few unidentified ships in my time, and I've heard stories of really old looking ships appearing in the fog. Another creepy thing that happens is dead animals washing up. Now that's nothing out of the ordinary, but some of the animals wash up completely hollow. Anything from fish, to birds, to even seals. Speaking of washed up animals, sometimes people stumble across the corpse of a golem yanka. Pick is what the fish looks like, so you can't blame people for being scared shitless when they see one. So onto the interesting green text worthy stuff. Be me. Be around 9 or 10. Me and friends go hang out. It's the winter. During the winter, Lake Baikal freezes up completely. So me and my friends are walking on the ice. We're hanging out and some of my friends call us to him. He's crouched and is staring at the ice. He points and tells us to look. Two prints are pushing against the ice. They look like suckers, but with fingers. They start moving, so we follow. Part two. We keep following until we hear a crack. Most late by call is pretty safe to walk on, but it's better to be safe than sorry, so we stop. The prints keep going. Then the ice cracks open. Two massive limbs come out of the ice. They suck onto the ice and a creature rises up from the water. This thing looked like a cross between a lobster and a mosquito. Thing only walked on two legs. It was like three or four fucking meters tall. As soon as we see it, we run like hell. Slip on ice like a retard. Friends abandon me. Thanks. Think I'm dead. Thing just walks by and keeps going. I come back home bawling my eyes out. Try to explain, but can't. Parents slap me and tell me not to go on a frozen lake without supervision. People commonly report seeing something similar in the north of the Baikal. Dark color, two legs, straw mouth crustacean. I think I've gotten around seven similar reports. On watch duty, I might have seen it on a few occasions, but it was always too far to really make out. First creepy thing that happened on the job. Boat goes missing. It shows up like a week later. We go to investigate. The boat is completely empty. So we dock it while the search party looks for survivors. So I'm hanging out. Guy watching over the boat calls out through the radio. Uh, there's an intruder on the boat. We go check on it. There's a dude with a hat just hanging out on the boat. Guy's really weird, though. It's like he isn't even fully solid. Coworker tries to get near the guy. The dude fucking splits apart into a few pieces, and they all jump into the water. Big what-the-fuck moment. Part 3. In the past 20 years... There have been these two strange cases. In 2001 and 2013, bodies were found washed up with very strange markings. Their blood vessels were very dark, their eyes were grayed out, and their muscles were very tensed up. In the first case, forensics came back telling us it was just drowning and exposure. Second time, we struggled to even contact them. Eventually, they came back with the same result, drowning and exposure. Thing is though, these people were incredibly experienced in their field. Another thing was that the second guy was reported missing 
two weeks before we found him. Yet his body was in prim condition. So about two months ago, we get a report of a washed up body. We came to check on him. It was an old person who hit his head somehow and drowned. His skin was pale and his vessels stood out. I could tell he didn't die like the other two, but the look of him reminded me of those two. Just a preface, he did not die the same way as those two. Clear differences were signs of decomposition, his body being relaxed, and his eyes having color. I brought up the similarity to my coworker. He didn't know about it, so I promised to tell him later. We met up at a local cafe afterwards. We were talking about the cases. Then, we got interrupted by this old dude. We'll call him Steig. For the longest time, I assumed he was just some schizo. Dude is very dirty, mutters to himself, has no friends or family, spends most of his time on the shore taking notes. He's not violent, but most people consider him a nuisance. So he intervenes and instantly asks if their eyes were gray. I tell him, yes. Saik jumps in excitement. This gets awkward, so we get ready to leave. Saik chases after us and asks if they were decomposing. Now, I'm intrigued. So I give him the benefit of the doubt and tell him to go off. Saik then starts to lay it out. Part 4 I relay his words and bullet points. The thing that is responsible for these two deaths is called a crawling jellyfish. It can filter oxygen both from air and water. Its tentacles produce an adhesive which let it crawl on land. It also produces an insanely strong poison. It works by completely destroying blood cells and the slightest concentration of it can have disastrous effects on the body. The poison this jelly uses is 84% pure. The effect of the poison darkens the blood and destroys the pigmentation of the eyes. It also works as an amazing antibiotic which can preserve the body for more than a month. The chemical reaction between the poison and water tenses up the muscles. And they are exclusive to the lake by call. They used to be a huge problem during the first half of the 20th century. Post-World War II, the government decided to use cyanide to kill off their populations. They poisoned the water supply, but it was covered up. He predicts their current population to be at the double digits. After this, I'm a bit taken aback. While Stajic was going off, some guy tells him to shut up and fuck off. Stajic leaves, but I'm really interested if he's got more to share. Part 5 After a week, I kind of forgot about the whole ordeal. Then, I spotted Stajic taking notes while on my patrol. I approached him and asked what's up. Dude almost jumped out of his skin when I did so. I asked, is everything okay? He told me, yeah, with a shaky voice. Then, I asked him about the dude that kicked him out the other day. Tells me that it's nothing. So, I ask if he can tell me more about that jellyfish. He apologizes and tells me he has to leave. I think to myself, how can a fucking hobo be busy? I start following him around and try to get him to talk. Stike just gives me the silent treatment. Keep following him for 30 minutes. Have to stop, cause job. After work, decide to go ask around about Stike. Nobody really knows much about him. He's always just been a part of life. No one really knows when, where, or how he got here. He's just always been here. Decide to ask the dude from the cafe about Stike. You shouldn't hang around with that guy, Anon. He's probably unhinged. Asked why he kicked him out. The guy smells like shit, Anon. True. So, in my travels, I found out only one thing. The guy fucking loves chess. Damn good, too. Sometimes, he challenges the other old folk. Next day, buy a chessboard and wait in the park in the after hours. Bait worked perfectly. Stike comes out of the bushes, beer can in hand, and asks for a game. Try to get him to chat. Fucker is really focused on the game, though. I'm shit and get beat in like three moves. He comes back for a rematch a few days later. Came up with the idea to give him something stronger. Russian standard. Works like a charm. 
part six. He talks about how bad the pollution in the Baikal is, and so on. Ask him how does he know so much. Oh, I was a biologist. Elaborate. Did research on the lake for almost 30 years. What happened then? Quit. Why? Didn't have a choice. How come? He looks at me. Hey, Anon, you want to see something cool? Uh... Come on, I'll show you something that'll blow you away. Agree. Don't want to get raped in some crack den, so get knife just in case. You know, Anon, you're a good kid. I'm in my 30s. Who cares? You're still young. That's why you have to see what I have. Okay. He gets to his makeshift home. Inside is a fucking VCR and two tapes. They're labeled blah 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 1988, 1 and 2. What is this? Cool, eh? You kids probably never seen it before. Ask him if he's got a TV from the period. No. For fuck's sakes, I have to get an adapter. No local stores have one, so I have to ship it. Fucker cost a leg and an arm. After four days, it's finally here. When I get to Styx shack, he's not happy. Tells me that I used him. We get into a heated argument. Eventually, he breaks. For God's sake, fine. If you want to watch them so bad, then let's go already. Told him that he's not going to get near my apartment without a shower. Eventually, he convinced me to let him use mine. After him, the shower, no joke, became a fucking gas chamber. So, we finally hook up the VCR. It's insane how much care he put into maintaining it. We boot up the first tape. It's two hours long. Around a third of it is just inside of a sub, with nothing happening. Part 7. While this is happening, I ask Styek to explain how and why he has these. Here's what he's told. Turns out, Styek was an important researcher during the Soviet era. The reason for this mission happening is because while making topographical scans, the Soviet Union discovered that the lake is actually deeper than previously thought. The scans showed that past the 1600 meter bottom, the lake continues. This is because stronger sonar can penetrate the false bottom. What is the false bottom? He explained it as a layer of a dense, viscous underwater brine. Past this false bottom, the lake continues another 1,200 meters. It is located at the center of the lake. The problem is that the Lake Baikal is a freshwater lake, and such a thing should be impossible. So the mission was supposed to retrieve samples, geological data, and maybe explain the oddity. The actual video finally begins, and three men enter the sub, one of which is our man, Steig. They descend, and the tape shows the usual shit you would find in the lake. Fish, seals, etc. The weird shit starts towards the end of the first tape. Passing 900 meters, our first oddity pops up. Every creature shown in the tape was given an in-depth explanation by Steig. Part 8. First thing the camera catches is a huge fucking jellyfish. And I mean massive. This fucking thing's body was about as big as a bus. The tentacles were definitely longer than a blue whale. Pick is the closest to it by looks. Steik walks up to the TV and points at its body. Its body is actually a separate ecosystem in itself. While feeding, the jellyfish filters water so well that it actually creates a separate environment inside the creature. The concentration of water in the jellyfish differs from the outside by about six or seven percent. This is enough of a difference to create a completely alien environment. Its size provides a safe home for many smaller creatures. The ecosystem is so advanced that there is a food chain inside. There is a plankton that can produce energy with a very limited amount of light, which is provided by the luminance of its host. They get eaten by a shrimp-like creature, which gets eaten by an apex predator. Then the predator's waste is used to feed the plankton, and so the cycle goes on. These creatures are not only exclusive to Baikal, but the jellyfish too. The men in the submarine don't seem all that surprised about it. So, I ask Steik how long they've known about it. Ever since the 50s. 
they started washing up in mass after the extermination of the crawler jellyfish. Part 9. As they go deeper, the lake bed is covered by whale bones. The thing is, Baikal isn't home to any known whale species. One of the whale skeletons begins to move. Holy shit, it's the fucking ghost fish. I remember the few reports of a massive see-through fish swimming near the ice. Here's how Steig explained it. It turns out that the bones are reanimated by a single-celled organism. This organism begins to build a colony by mooching off the minerals in these whale bones. Eventually, they construct a membrane around the skeleton which vaguely resembles a whale. The inside of this colony is filled with an acidic, sugary solution which keeps the entire organism buoyant. It then travels in the lake, its new source of food being microorganisms that it digests using the solution. Though after a long time the solution will damage the whale's bones to the point where they cannot support the construct. The organism most likely dies here, because at this stage, it can't filter water without moving. As they descend deeper, weird things keep appearing. Crabs with legs the length of cars. A giant centipede-like creature, huge eels, tentacled creatures that connected in rings, what I think might have been trilobites, and more that I couldn't even make out. Once they go down past 1600 meters, life becomes more scarce. Eventually, they reach the false bottom. It is a massive brine pool. There is zero life around it. One or two dead fish surface from the brine periodically. Steik said they took samples of the water above the brine, said that the only life there were a few species of extremophile bacteria, but even they were struggling to survive. Okay, so this is the part I was debating to post. Looking at what happens next fucked with my mind so hard, I had to move away. So here's a content warning. I don't know if there really needs to be one, but... Here it is. Read or listen at your own risk. They penetrate into the brine layer. At this point, Steig stops the tape and tells me to stop watching. I ask why, but he ignores me and goes to take the tape away. I try to stop him, but he takes the tape, and only that tape, and runs off. For a week, I ask him to let me finish it. He constantly shoots me down. My curiosity got the better of me. I knew that Steik wasn't a vigilant guy, so when he went for one of his regular walks around the shore, I went to his shack and took the tape. So, last warning. Proceed at your own risk. They descend 300 meters below the brine. Their sonar picks up something massive. They approximated it to be almost two kilometers in length. Then, it comes on screen this fucking serpent. Serpent isn't even a good way to describe its shape. It just being there fucked with sonar, the cameras, and the crew. The entire crew spent like 10 minutes just screaming and raving. Its eyes stared straight into the camera. And no matter where I was, its eyes followed me. While watching, I felt this weird sensation. It's like I knew that whatever I was looking at was fucking evil. Everything about it was wrong. In time, one of the crew managed to get a grip and sent the submarine upwards. After the tape ended, I could hear it. It was this feeling in the back of my head. It was beckoning towards the lake. Toward it. Fucker didn't even speak a word, and I knew what it wanted. I couldn't take it, and I went to talk to Steig. As soon as he saw me, he punched me in the jaw. Get caught a fucking retard. He takes the tape from me and snaps over his knee. This is why I didn't want you to watch these tapes. I begged him to tell me what's going on. After he calmed down, he sat down, and he asked me a question. Here's what he told me. Back in the Cold War, the Soviets were planning to use Lake Baikal for propaganda purposes, but their scientists could never figure out why exactly this kind of diversity was exclusive to the lake. 
And it's not like the Americans had something to hide. If they couldn't hide the nuke, then everything else was on the table. They cross-referenced every sea, ocean, lake, river, and puddle, and found that over 60% of Lake Baikal's life was not found anywhere else. Why is that? Steik believes that it's that thing that lures life to it. For whatever reason, it attracts life to itself. Though the better question is, why is that thing there in the first place? He says because it's supposed to be a prison. Think about it. Why has the Baikal not changed in over 25 million years? Why is there a kilometer deep layer of brine in a freshwater lake? Whether it's aliens, God, or some natural phenomenon, that brine is keeping it in and everything else out. After the mission went bust, Stag decided to quit and stole the only existing footage of that mission. He tried to get a job, but since then, he was blacklisted from getting one. So, he remained here. I don't know why he chose to keep that tape, but at least, it's destroyed now. Eventually, I couldn't take it. That thing fucked with my vision, my senses, and even my speech. So, I was forced to move in with my sister in Chiabinsk. It seems like proximity to the lake is what affects me. I still get nightmares and shit from time to time, but I don't know if it's some psychological thing or that thing. By any chance, did the face resemble this pig? Holy shit. That is uncannily similar. Though the face should be longer, the mouth bigger, and there shouldn't be a nose. If you did this and combined it with the picture and got rid of all the fins and made the body smooth, you would get an almost perfect recreation. <laughs>